Oh yeah, I'm going to show you how to use this new website which I've just built. I thought it was a bit of demand or potential demand for the ability to have a free component infantry system, which is what this site is. So, give you feedback on the logo. I mean, I just threw this thing together literally in a couple of minutes, the logo and parts. So, I think it's so bad it's good, but I don't know. So, give me your thoughts. It's a bit bright. Anyway, so this site is basically my idea with this is to keep it really simple. I want a nice, simple, easy to use system. So, I'm trying to keep it as minimalized as possible but still provide necessary functionality. So as you can see here, it's a parts inventory system designed for simple and easy to use, well designed to be simple and easy to use, for with hobbyists and makers in mind. Right? So if you have parts, storage and you know, like electronic components or, or bits and pieces or modules or whatever, and you've just got so many you can't keep track of them, or you want a better way of organising them. The idea is that you can have a inventory system so you know where these parts are. So you have got component drawers, for example, and you'll number the drawers and you'll be able to identify where the parts are. So I've built this. This is mine, and I'm going to be tweaking it here and there and doing bits and pieces as it comes along or as feedback comes in about potential improvements. I'm going to log in. So you've got to make login as well. So you don't actually log in every time. It will store your login details in a cookie. Cookies are on the site. They're required. I'm not going to put a disclaimer on the site, it's just dumb. If his website's got bloody cookies on it and everyone gets sick of clicking pop-ups, I'm not clicking on putting it on there. So yeah, it's going to have automatic login, so if you want, you can no, not save it if you want, it's up to you. So I'm going to log in. So this section here is my stuff, you don't need to see any of that. Um, but the main thing here is these sections here, these three pages. So you've got your parts inventory, which is linked up the top here as well. You can import a parts list from a CSV file into the inventory. And it is the CSV template as well, just here. So you can download the template and then populate that on your own machine and then just upload it to the site if you prefer to do it that way. You can also upload a template from the list you've downloaded from the site, which is this exporting function here. So you can ex actually export the inventory to your machine and then you maybe modify it and do what you need to do and then actually re-upload re it to the site if you want. It's different ways. This is my parts inventory in here. This is just a, a mock one. I haven't actually set this up properly yet. I'm just still testing it and playing around. So I'll just set up a bunch of random parts and things. Nothing particularly true, just random things. And this is basically an inventory list. So it'll tell you the bin, which is the location of the part, the part number that you put in, the package style, the type of part it is, um, a general description, um, how many you got in quantity, like packaging, so it could be reels, tapes, loose, whatever, right? It's all free form fills, you can put whatever you want in any of these things. Uh, the project, so if you've got this for a particular item you're making or maybe across a range of items, you could put those in there. Again, you can put in as many as you want. Links, now this is a field which will pass the link and give you an actual link on the page, so you can go straight to it that way. And you can put text in as well, like if I go to edit on this one, you'll see in here I put the word data sheet and then I've got the link to the data sheet just in here. And I've got the word purchase here and this the link to the purchase link, well, generally, right? So you can actually go and edit things manually in here as well, as you can just see. So you do an edit link, or we'll click on the edit link and it'll pull it up and you can change anything in here you want. Doesn't matter, you can change anything. And then you can do update and it'll refresh it, okay? You can also add parts through this web page individually and put, type it all in manually. The only thing that's actually required when you're filling this in, there's only one thing which is required. And that's the part number, right? Everything else is completely optional, doesn't matter, I don't care. But the only thing that has to be there is a part number, okay? That's the only required field because it's everything's based on that part number, at least initially when you first put it in there. Once it's in the system, you can change that too, all right? Um, so even that is still editable. The other thing you can do is you can do a search, all right? So let's say I want a, a SOT package device. Right, ignore my auto filling, and you can just do a search from that. Search, and it will filter it out by SOT device on, on the listing, just like that. Okay, so that's sort of plan there. Um, it can do multiple searches as well. Right, so if, if I just do project various, right, instead, that pulls up everything from various projects, it's not no specific device, and I could then go, you know, diode. Obviously, there's only going to be one result in this case, but I could do that. 
Okay, so there we go. So they will filter down to diode from various projects. When it comes to refreshing the display, actually I should put a refresh link in here, shouldn't I? If you, if you start a search, I'll put a clear search here. But you can always just blank everything out and do search again, or just put it all back up. Or if you want to look for, say, real, right? Anything's on reels, you could do that. And there's always stuff that's on reels. So this is what I've done. It's a nice, simple search parameter. If you want something which is only on a SOT23, and then I'll filter it down some more, obviously you're going to see these results. All right, so this is an AND search. You don't have an ALL search set up. It meets all criteria. Okay, so it has to meet this and this in order for it to find it. Um, I think it's probably the best way of doing it. If I do all searches, it could be potentially a bit complex as far as what results you see. If there's demand for it, I may change it and make it an add a option there for an or search or something like that. Um, I don't think it really requires it. So for now, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I think I will put a link in here, though, to say that, um, you know, to clear the search or something like that. I think it'll just be a bit easier. Right. Or you can always just go click there again, that brings it back up. So that's that part. Okay, so from here you can do an import of a CSV or you can export the imagery into an XLS. Alright, so an Excel file. So I'm going to export this inventory into an XLS. Alright. So I'll click on that, it downloads automatically. I'm running on Safari. Okay, I'm gonna pull that up, and there it is. There's the XLS file with the inventory in it. Okay. Now the only thing with XLS is that it may format some cells. Let's set that to one um, wide. Like that is number that maybe, but this is called that a number cell maybe. So it's changed the formatting. So it's being left cell aligned, it's right aligned, which means it's probably a number that I don't know. It's it's off the top of the bloody page, it's helpful, isn't it? Okay, so yeah, it's I don't know why it's done that because it's formatted as a number, but anyway, the, the data's in here. I mean, once you've got the thing downloaded, you could you could add files to it, you know, add in more rows, change things as you want locally, and then you can actually re upload this to the site if you wanted to, All right? But you have to save as a CSV first, right? Because don't forget, this is currently set up well, this file is an XLS. So if you want to upload to the site, you have to upload in a CSV. Okay, um, I may look into um, adding the ability to upload other types of files. I'll have to just look into what's required in the code. I've always just used CSV myself, so that's what I've just built, and that's always been fine for me. I haven't really worried about it because you can just export a CSV from inside Excel, and you're done. Okay, so that's the export side. The import inside. This is a bit more complicated. Not much more. It's got some options, which is what makes it a bit more complicated. Okay. So from here, you can download the template. All right. So bin, part number, package type, description, quantity, packaging, project, li link, lead time, and last updated. All right. Those are the headings. Now, with the uploaded files, it ignores the very first row in the file because it assumes the first row is going to be a header. Okay. So if you don't have headers, make sure the first row is blank, otherwise it'll miss that part. Uh, or you could just download, export the inventory, and then use that file as the uploader. You know, either way will work. Okay. Now I've got four options on here, as I, as I've got comments in here about how to use it. This explains a little bit more detail, so I'll just show you the menu because it also explains in the menu itself. So first option is replace existing inventory. So what that means the file you upload will delete your existing inventory on the website and replace it with the contents of the file you've uploaded. Okay, So if you're doing a complete update and you're just starting from scratch or starting from fresh and you know your, your inventory on the site's out of date or something for some reason and you just want to re-upload a new version of it with a CSV then use that option. It'll just replace what's on the site with what's in the file. Then you've got this version here, which is add to existing inventory, right? Which means you, whatever you, whatever um, devices are listed in the file, will be added onto this website's inventory. Okay, it will just add them in. Doesn't manipulate anything else. Doesn't change anything. It's already there. It just adds more data to the site. The next one here is add merge. Right? This has got dual function. If a part in the uploaded file is already in the inventory. 
as in the same part number, the same package style, same packaging. So those three criteria have to be the same. Part number, package, and packaging have to be the same. If they're the same, it assumes it's the same device and the same organization structure. And then what it will do is it will combine the counts of what's in the file with what's on the website. So you say if you purchase some more of those items, you bought some more, and you just want to add them into the site, um, you could just do that and it will combine the counts. So say if you've got 10 listed in, 10 items listed in stock on the website and you purchase another 50, when you do this option, it will make the website say 60. As long as the part number, the package style, and the packaging are exact matches. Okay. If they're different, it will append information potentially. So if the packaging style is different, it will do a different thing, for example, right? I think it actually append the packaging onto the end of the existing ones. It will combine them as a single entry, but with different with multiple packaging types, for example. Um, but if the item is not on the website already and it's in the file, it will just add it to the website the same way that this option does here. Okay? And the last option, just add merge update, is a combination of those other ones as well. So it'll do an add if it's not already on the website. It'll do a merge if it it's already on the website and it'll do an update. But what it does is it replaces the part quantity with the quantity that's in the file. How can I explain this? So, yeah, if, 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 whether, if you've got a quantity on the website and say you've got five listed but you know you've got 70 and you've got multiple items like that, you can still load them in the file and it'll update those quantities on the website to be the same quantities as you have listed in the file. It'll just replace them. Yes, yeah, so it kind of merges them together but updates the quantities with what's in the file. Um, it also append information onto the end if there's a difference. So it will combine things differently. Let's upload a file. So I'm going to drag this one in. Inventory 2. Now I've already got these on the site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a add merge. This will increase the quantity. All right, so if I go to parts inventory right now. And this is the inventory and I upload this file with add merge so upload that and my internet's dropped out again <laughs> now my internet can just give me trouble now awesome anyway what I'll do I, I won't go through that so in this case if I've got 15 there on the website this is the device it's uploading as a 741 if it's got 15 on the website when you upload that file again it's with that add merge it'll become 30 because that's what's in the file is 15 so that become 30 or double that count only. That's the way it works anyway. So make sure you go and check it out. Mypartsbin.com. Go and register. Which I'll show you the registration page. I'm not asking for much. I actually might even ask for less. So all I require for registration is your name, email address for contact and confirmation, pick a username and password, and that's it. Now I'm actually even think about taking away the surname part, the last name, because I don't really need to know that. But it's just in the form. I mean, I may just not capture that in the end. I don't know. If it bothers you, then put gibberish on there or something. I don't. I really don't care. It's not like I'm going to contact you about it. So that's that. So the plan as well is to eventually come back over here, as I mentioned down here. Once I've got this site and I'm happy with it and it does what I want. What I intend to do is to make a open source version of the inventory page. So that, that main page which has the inventory on it, which lists all your devices, that page could be run locally on your own web server. Without all the other stuff around it, you wouldn't need the whole website structure, all the other importers, exporters, you won't need any of that. You just need the inventory page. And I could do like a stripped down version of that which doesn't have all the website stuff around it, but still functions in the same way. And you could run that on your local web server. So that's something I intend to do at some point once I'm sure that the design and the functionality is correct. So if you want to try this out and help the process along and speed things up, join the website, log in and start using it. Because um, the more people that use it and the more feedback I get about it, the quicker it will develop and that will be helpful to everyone. And so this is going to be free. I'm not going to, this site's not going to go away anytime soon. Okay. 
I've run several free websites. This is just another one because I have a hosting solution. So it doesn't cost me any money apart from the domain name. Now, if this does prove to be popular and does get used by people, then one thing I will be adding is this SSL thing. Oh, I've got a badge on here right now. It's not actually SSL secured. But if it actually gets used, I will spend the money and get the SSL. That's not much. It's like another 20 bucks or something. It's not that expensive. But I don't want to commit to that unless people are going to use it. Because right now, I'm the only person that's using it. Nobody else is. Um, but if people use it, then I'll get this SSL thing set up and, and make it secure login and that sort of stuff. So it uses SSL and um, you know make everyone happy. Okay, please give me comments down below. Tell me what you think. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video, if you like the concept. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs down twice. And I think we'll be good. Catch you later.